As 2020 comes to a close, how was your year? The worst year ever. 2020 has been awful by so many measures. Gentlemen. We did have a bitter election. The Radical question, left. Will you shut who is up, man? Listen, who is and the pandemic. But there is also good news. If I were to pick a year, the best year in human history to face a pandemic, I would say it's 2020. Johan Norberg's new book, The Story of Human Progress, points out that people just don't realize that life keeps getting better. Which other year would you pick? Well, you could go for 2005. Well, in that case, you wouldn't have the technology to create these mRNA vaccines. Had we had this in 1990, we wouldn't have a World Wide Web and I wouldn't be able to participate in your show. And if we had had this pandemic in 1976, we wouldn't have been able to read the genome of the virus. And if we had had this pandemic in 1950, we wouldn't have had a single ventilator. These last 20 years, says Norberg, have been especially good. Mankind has attained more wealth than ever. A lot of this money went to the top 1% and ordinary people. Eat the rich and feed the poor. They think they're doing worse. And if you look at specifics like global poverty, child mortality, chronic undernourishment, and illiteracy, they all declined faster than ever. All are pretty good measures of quality of life. Literacy might be the most important skill you can acquire because it's the skill that makes it possible to acquire other skills. And we've never seen literacy at these high levels ever before. In the most problematic countries around the world, it's better than it was in the richest countries some 50, 60 years ago. And that's most important for those who have the least. But the media seek out bad news. The devastation we're seeing to women in this post-pandemic economy. We're a failed society. Uh, this thing hits us when we have low levels of social trust, when suicide was spiking. Suicide is up. I can definitely see the problems, but once upon a time, if you ended up in the wrong school or in the wrong neighborhood, you had nowhere to go. There was no other community available to you. Now there is, and that opens up a world of opportunity. Some awful things as well, but also some beautiful things. That meant even during COVID, more people could find new ways to help others. People are calling me saying, like, I want to come work, like to volunteer and donate their time, which is like, I cannot believe it. Your granddaughter, she arranged for us to bring you a meal. Oh, my God. So we brought you that. Open up that door and I walk right in. All we do is hand you the bag. Simple. Done. In 2020, businesses had more tools with which to adapt to COVID. We pushed everything to curbside and carry out. The owner of Maryland Crab King quickly redesigned his kitchen. My sales actually picked up because our system actually allowed us to be able to be more efficient than we were before COVID. Such improvements rarely make news because reporters like to find problems. Many say the environment's getting worse. Biodiversity is reportedly declining faster than that of any time. Even if that were true. We have never made this much progress against pollution. The six leading pollutants, the ones that used to pollute our lungs and our, our forests and our rivers, uh, they've declined by some 70%. And it's too bad that our social media suggests we're on the brink of World War III. People think there's as much or more war as ever. But we've forgotten the wars that we had in the past. There are not only fewer wars today than there used to be. When I grew up in the 1980s, uh, the battle death rates were four times higher. Less war is one reason people keep living longer. After COVID, that trend will continue. We have this tendency for good reasons to focus on problems because that's our way of solving problems. But then there's the risk that we'll just despair and think it's hopeless and we give up. And that's not the solution to our problems. Just cheer up and be happy. We should be a little bit grateful for what we have. And I'm grateful to you for helping me make these videos. It's been tougher because of COVID, but Thanks to people like you and your donations, please click that button. We've been able to keep making them. 
If you'd like a tax deduction for a donation, you can donate to the Center for Independent Thought. That's the nonprofit that supports us. Happy New Year. Thank <laughs> you.